Hello all, Bion here, aka Sensa. Today I'll be going over the Vertigo fight, which is the second encounter in Death Nail. It starts immediately once you click the trapdoor from the first encounter. First, let's start with group makeups. You'll want to start by organizing two groups, which we have as group 11 and 12 in our raid window, which you can see. You want one group to consist of mages for coughing, a tank, a healer that is comfortable curing, and a slower. You'll want your second group to consist of anyone that can self-evac, which you'll see we have a druid, two wizards, and two necromancers. For floor 2, you can see in our beta window we use group 9, which consists of 2-3 to three trap disarmers and a cleric, and we use the cleric specifically for their epic, which can cure some of the negative effects. For floor 3, we basically move the rest of the raid there once floor 3 goes active. When floor 4 starts, on floor 3 essentially we leave three groups, which consist of a tank, a shaman, a bunch of DPS, an enchanter, and any extra healers you might have. On floor 4, when it becomes active, we move basically all of our SKs and pallies, a shaman or two, an extra couple of healers, and maybe about a group of DPS. It is essentially just for kiting slash off tanking the orcs and potentially burning down one. Now that we've talked about group composition, let's talk about the actual fight. It's a 20 minute fixed fight consisting of four phases. Each phase is five minutes long. The fight starts as soon as you click down from the first encounter and it starts with the bat phase and it's five minute timer as soon as it starts. On the first floor with the bats, all you simply need to do is continue killing them as they spawn from the NPC. They are very easy, they do not hit very hard, and they also don't have very much HP. After 5 minutes, floor 2 will go active. We usually have our group ready for floor 2 move down about a minute prior, and essentially that NPC will spawn on that floor as well, and continue popping out traps under him as he walks around the room. These traps do need to be sensed first, and then disarmed. It's very important when disarming these to keep your distance from him and sense and then disarm. The explosion or the trap radius of these is quite large and the trap itself roots the person and as well does a massive amount of damage. I believe it's roughly 10k. You can cure this with Purify and I believe the shield clicky as well from the cleric which is why we uh, use the cleric there. You have to disarm 20 traps total over that 5 minute period of time. And if your disarmers are ahead of the curve, you should have anywhere from 30 to 50 seconds of breather room before the next phase starts. Now with roughly a minute before phase 3 goes active, we have the rest of the raid which is on the first floor, run back towards the entrance and jump off onto the banister down below and run to floor 3. Floor 3 is once again an NPC that spawns and he pops out zombies one at a time. These zombies don't hit that hard, they do have an okay amount of HP, uh, but they do have an AoE, so you do want to make sure you have enough DPS there to kill them quick enough. You have to kill roughly 10-15 to 15 of these before they stop spawning, and once again, if your DPS is good enough, you should have between 30 and 50 seconds to spare before the fourth phase spawns, giving you a bit of a breather. If your DPS is low, you might notice that you might have anywhere from 2-3 to three zombies up at a time. They are miserable, just simply make sure your enchanter is on the ball. Now about a minute before phase 4 goes active, we move the assigned groups down there, which is the SK and Pally group, a couple healers, and usually a group of DPS down to that floor, and get ready for the NPC to spawn there. You'll continue popping out orcs throughout the fight, pop out about every 30 seconds or so. You will have quite a few of them up, uh, about 5 to 6, maybe even 7 depending on your DPS. It's important that you just kite these and or off tank them. They do die of exhaustion and essentially there's a, a hidden timer somewhere that if they uh, are up long enough they'll just fall over and die. You can also DPS them down, they do have quite a bit of HP and like I said we usually send one group there to DPS them down and we'll probably kill anywhere from two to three while the rest of them just kind of fall over. The one caveat to this room is that if you have a tank kiting around multiples and he gets swapped to another room they will try and run out of the room and they will reset and this will reset their timer and you can potentially wipe this way so just make sure your other tanks down there are aware of this you're vocal about it and you taunt off if your tank gets swapped so now let's just talk about the overall mechanics of the fight as well there's a debuff that goes out called vertigo and it gets applied to people randomly 
uh, usually between four and five people at a time. We just make sure that they put an exit in raid and we RGC them. If they don't get RGC'd in time, they become drunk, which makes the fight uh, a little bit more unbearable. The other uh, mechanic that happens during this fight is that two people will randomly get swapped positions. So you could be on floor one and you'll get swapped with someone on floor four. It's very important that these people know how to get back to their proper floor. It's also very important that no one ever runs through floor two. You need to keep that floor specifically for trap disarming. If you have random people running through it and they trigger traps, it's gonna get a whole bunch of people killed and you will most likely wipe that encounter. So if group one or floor one folks get swapped down to floor four, it's important that they either self evac or get cost. That's the whole point of building the group like that. And the person who gets put on floor one knows that they need to go back to the entrance, jump off and run all the way back down to floor four or floor three. Once again, super important, no one runs through floor 2. After 20 minutes, you'll get a chest spawn at the bottom and all remaining ads will depop. And congratulations, you've beat the encounter. One thing you need to keep in mind about this encounter is it can be a little stressful if communication is not key. And it's also a little bit stressful too if too many people are talking at the same time. So it's just really important to make sure that comms are kept open for really important calls. And each floor just kind of do their own thing. It's very, very simple if you just look at it floor by floor and just need everyone to kind of pitch in and get the job done. Anyways, I hope you enjoy the content. I plan to upload a full Death Knell run as well. If you have any questions as well, feel free to hit me up on the Mangler server under the name Byun or on any of the EQ discords. And uh, feel free to comment as well and I'll uh, try and answer. Thank you very much.